All right, man, let's talk about uh, De La Hoya Slams, Al uh, Heyman, uh, for ruining boxing. All right. Um, and that's what he was alluding to with Terrence Crawford. You know what I'm saying? Um, but then you got to remember, what was it, the dark night when he went after uh, Falcone for letting the Joker off the off the leash? He was like, somebody had to let the Joker, you know, off the leash or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And guess what? Al Heyman came in the game, you know, with a Floyd Mayweather, but De La Hoya gave him a lot of power too. He finessed the hell out of De La Hoya. And what's so funny, De La Hoya come from East L.A. You know what they say about, you know, um, them people that come from East L.A., what they think about black people. So for him to let Al Heyman swindle him like that, for the most part, all that all that really meant, in my humble opinion, was it was just, it sounded like it was a good business proposition or he paid him. And Al Heyman, you got to think about it. He done messed over Floyd Mayweather. You know, let's keep it real. He done messed over Oscar De La Hoya. He done messed over NBC. He done messed over the Viacom family and networks. He done uh, messed over Fox. He done messed over HBO. He done messed over ESPN. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, um, that's what people don't really recognize, man. He messed over a lot of people. You know? And you can't say he messed over Bob Arum because Bob Arum started hating first. But I think, you know, Bob Arum didn't start hating from a place of, you know, it wasn't from a place, a good place. He started hating because Al was getting more money out of HBO than he could get out of HBO. That's just where that started at. So I can't even say he fucked over Bob Arum. You know, you know, but, uh, but yeah, let's get into what he said. He did an interview with uh with KL artist. Shout out to them. Um, he said, you know, De La Hoya beats last Al Heyman for ruining things. He said, I hear it's a rumor, but that's all it is. De La Hoya said the KL artist about PBC possibly moving to the zone following Showtime's exit from boxing. Now, apparently, too, I haven't listened to it, but I listened to it this morning when I get to work. The boxing voice is reporting that Al Heyman ain't got nowhere to go. The Amazon Prime deal ain't close. And that Al Heyman don't want to go to the zone. So y'all can go over there and check that interview out. They did it a lot. Uh, depend, I'll probably drop this this morning. They did that last night. So he said, imagine PBC and Eddie Hearn. Uh, my bad. He says, I I'm going to read the quotes. He ruined relationships with NBC. He ruined a relationship with Fox. He spent Showtime's money. So every network he goes to, he just ruins it because it has to be his way or no way. He would know because he, he worked with him. He said, so I don't know how the zone it would even entertain anything like that. De La Hoya said, I'm open to it and willing to work with anybody. But I just want to make sure people understand what has been going on with these networks and why this has been happening. He said, somebody just told me, well, yeah, because everything that Al Heyman touched turns to bronze, not gold. So it's a concern. But if the zone or whatever, whoever wants to facilitate and have everyone under one roof, yeah, I'll be it'll be a better sport so we can make those fights happen. But the problem is, you know, he had all his fighters under one roof, under two roofs at time with Fox and Showtime, and he still didn't want to make the fights people wanted to see. Period. He only started making fights when his when his when his when his when his, when his uh, neck was on the line. You know what I'm saying? You know, when his neck was on the line. So that's when he started to want to open up and, and, and make these fights. So just gotta remember, you got to remember that. Got to remember that. That's when he started to want to, you know, do things the right way. He said, you got to take a look at the economics of it. You got to take a look at those big fights taking place on pay-per-view solely uh, on pay-per-view. Al Heyman, Sprinkle, Stephen S. And with a couple good fights from Showtime. I think that's an understatement. Uh, but nothing uh, to nothing to wow the executive, nothing to renew the contracts. And it's an issue. It's been a problem. It's been an issue. Yep. He, I don't even say a couple good fights. The fights that are good are fights that don't have a name brand. One thing about boxing, you need the name brand. You need the name. The name is damn near more important than the quality of fighting the ring. Because if it ain't a quality fight in the ring, guess what? Guess what? Ain't nobody gonna come see it. Let's keep it real. Ain't nobody gonna come see it. 
So it's very important, you know what I'm saying? It's very important that you have the quality, you have the quality of fight. It's very important that you got the proper quality of fight. It's imperative. So he goes on. What happened to NBC? What happened to Fox? What happened to Showtime? Al Heyman happened. I mean, you go ESPN too. You go HBO too. You know, so this is talking about, you know, good management. He said, what I was referring to is a fighter has a short window of opportunity. He said, De La Hoya, get yourself a competent, smart team that trusts, uh, that you trust, that you can delegate to talk to your negotiate for you and focus on your training. And this is what I was going live about last night when Terrence Crawford said, man, we need a seat at the table. But most of these fighters can't sit at the table like he can and be competent or be aware of what's going on. That's what I was saying. That's why they need to go through the proper precautions. And, you know, that boils down to, you know, you know, uh, uh, you know, some type of union or some type of global or federal or, or, or national uh, uh, whatever you want to call it, you know, you know, governing body or something like that. The average fighter said to say, well, he don't know what's going on financially. He don't know how that, you know, the numbers and all that shit mean. After a while, sitting at the table for a while, he'd know it. But this is why you need a good lawyer and a good manager. Most of these dudes got, got their managers as figureheads. Father the manager, he don't do shit. He don't negotiate a damn thing. He don't negotiate no type of, uh, he don't negotiate no type of, uh, you know, he doesn't negotiate any type of uh, sponsorship deals. Don't negotiate nothing. All they do is ask him about what he th- if he's a trainer, what he think about this fight. They ask the trainer, they ask the matchmaker, they ask the promoter, and they all just come together, and that's how they pick their opponents. So most of these dudes that's their manager and getting all this percentage out, they check, man, they don't, they don't do nothing. See, I've been a fighter, but I tried to be the same. The same at negotiating, negotiating at the, uh, the table with my opponent, with the managers on the side of the order promotion. Promoter, too too much ego. It will never work. Oh, I deserve 64. No, the F you don't. No, I deserve. And one of the reasons with De La Hoya is saying that could be true, but the main reason they don't want them at the table is because they're going to really see the totality, see all the money that they really make, and they be high money from these fighters, and that's why Crawford trying to get to the table. But the average fighter is not competent enough to sit at the table to know what's going on. A lot of these dudes, they signed the contract with Al Heyman. A 180 deal, forget a 360 deal. So, but he says, you know, Cole, you know how the fighters are. It doesn't work. Too many egos. That's what I meant. There are too many egos at the table. Delegate to your team, your smart team, who you trust, and you can take care of business inside the ring at the gym, inside the ring at the gym. And De La Hoy is telling the truth. But to a certain extent, it's the truth to his opinion when it come to, uh, you know, when it comes to, you know, another re- a hidden reason why he don't want him at the table because they see how much money they're really making. And they shave, and these promoters shave money off the top and then get her, then, you know, delegate the rest to the rest of the fight card or or to the event. That's why he don't he don't really want them to know what's 100 percent going on like Marvin Gaye. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm going to always keep it a hum bun, always keep it a thigh wild on that. Most of these dudes don't even know the dude at the table. Now, you know, Bernard Hopkins, I get some bonus talk. Bernard Hopkins on Showtime leaving boxing, I think it's good. And I'm on the side of Bernard Hopkins. Don't nobody pay for Showtime no more. Don't nobody watch Showtime no more. The production was trash. The quality was trash. It was a trash quality. You know what I'm saying? Even if they did put on great fights on there, I think if they did put on great fights, they would have put more into the production, into the quality of the event. He said, I think it's good. That's why I say rest in peace, said Bernard Hopkins to Fight Hub TV, you know, about Showtime. So he said, why wouldn't it be good? Why wouldn't why wouldn't it be bad? Hopkins said, you got to look at the new world order. Curtis Mayfield, I don't look at Showtime getting out of boxing as a bad or good thing. They want you to think that, that way. I can say I don't care, but I do. It's a change. It's a new world order. It happens in business, too. He said, oh, they're leaving. They're out of boxing. Is it bad? No, rest in peace. It's over. If you ain't going to live forever, do you think everything is going to last forever? Nope. Only suckers are afraid to change. The real men are not afraid to change. They embrace it. They they grab it, uh, and they execute every possibility to survive whatever the change is. And that's the real man. That what a real man does. So, see the real man step up in boxing, no matter if it's every network sleeves. And he's right about that. You know, we don't have 
the luxuries men to fall back on hope and fall back on government funding and and all that bullshit man we we got to make the pivot we got to change at the drop of a dime and keep hustling we ain't got time to cry and pop we got to find a solution we leaders who are you now as a company that goes for everybody that doesn't exclude golden boy that excludes everybody i want to put the challenge out there it, it would be great and uh if more will lead that means what he basically saying is let's just say something happened in the world where y'all had to work together to survive and bring everybody closer together and the races had to work with the nine races and the blacks and the mexican had to work with the whites and the puerto ricans and we all had to live you know as one people that would galvanize us and make us a better people and make a better humanity across the world and give people an understanding about the struggles and the strengths and the weaknesses that everybody go through that's what he's saying just to give you an analogy a real quick one he said you got to do the old school way flap foot hustler promoting when they didn't have tv what what happened when they didn't have tv to give them a big check called the license fee suckers cry by hbo leave how do you feel bernard so showtime president steven espinoza ain't mad do you know how much money he made facts do you know the pension he got he going to get but the suckers who are doing interviews are getting pennies off the dollar are talking about what do you think don't be a sucker man whether it's business whether it's your job whether it's anything you got to stand up sucker suckers what are you going to do now put your uh put your grown man drawers on and man up and get out the, get out the, uh get out of the way and get the f out the way he said what are you why what are you in the way for you're going to get ran over. Somebody is going to push you over and stump you to death. So get out the way. I just said new world order. You said transit, transit, uh, transition. What's the difference? Hopkins said he's definitely right. All this do is bring the st- all this do all. Sometimes, sometimes you got to destroy the build. You know, a lot of times you got to destroy the build. So if you ain't gonna get out the way, you're gonna get ran over. If you ain't gonna make no adjustments, you're gonna get left behind. So. It is what it is. Thumbs up the video. Share the video. Subscribe to the channel. That subscribe button is the bell icon button. Hit all notifications. Increase your chance to get notifications. We go live or drop video financially. Want to support the channel? Cash app, dollar sign, CJ Good 313. Venmo, CJ Good 313. PayPal link in the description. Let me know what you girls and guys think in the comment section. Hit the link tree. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, Spotify, Anchor, Cash app, Venmo, PayPal, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, the whole nine. Appreciate the love and support. Let me know what you girls and guys think in the comment section. Check out the box news playlist for more videos like this. Peace.